What's up everybody? My name is Vincent. Welcome to Crypto Lucian, where we talk about everything under the moon in the crypto universe. Today is Tuesday, August 29th. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin and Bitcoin only because Bitcoin over the past 24 hours has pumped over 7%. Now, many other altcoins such as Ethereum, Cardano, and Solana have followed in this rally. But today, we just have to talk about Bitcoin because behind the pump, we had seen some recent news over the SEC versus the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust Company. Now, what is that all about? Well, I cannot wait to share with you what that news is. Now, be sure to stick around to the very end of the video because you want to hear my conclusion and statement of where I predict Bitcoin is going to be doing. Is it going to go down? Is it going to go up? Is it a time to accumulate or is it time to just sit on the sidelines to watch? But again, some recent news has come up, which I can't wait to share with you in this video. So be sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to join our Patreon page. And most importantly, please be careful with any of the scammers down in the comments below. I will never reach out via WhatsApp, Telegram, direct messaging or email. So please be careful and invest safely. So guys and girls, let's get right into it. Let's go ahead and look into Bitcoin. As you can see, Bitcoin used to be at around 26,000 US dollars. It's now hovering around around 27.8 thousand US dollars, but has even touched 28 thousand quite a couple times. As you can see here, it's been hovering around that new range. Now, why has this price of Bitcoin pumped? Well, it's in regards to this, and this is breaking news. Breaking. Grayscale wins the lawsuit against the SEC. DC Circuit Court of Appeals is vacating SEC's denial over GBTC's conversion into an ETF. If you don't know what the GBDC is, it's basically the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. And now, what is that all about? We, what we do know is that Grayscale filed a lawsuit against the SEC saying that it unlawfully and in a way tried to stop them from having their ETF approved while they were approving all these other ETFs such as future contracts or future ETFs. Let's talk more about that. Now, the way that Coindesk reports this, it says an appeals court has ordered the SEC to review its rejection of the Grayscale's Bitcoin ETF bid, potentially opening the door to an approval. Interesting. But further down, we got to look into some other details because, again, this is the founder of Grayscale, the CEO. And basically what he said is just in the D.C. Circuit ruled in favor of Grayscale in our lawsuit challenging the SEC's decision to deny the GBDC's conversion to an ETF. Thank you to everyone who has been on this journey with us, especially our investors. We are grateful for your support and encouragement. Next up, our legal team is actively reviewing the court's opinion. Follow Grayscale for more updates. And also we have Brian Armstrong from Coinbase, the CEO, saying congrats. Strange world we live in where winning against the SEC in court is seen as the rite of passage in our industry. Now, further on, we got to talk about this. Now, it says that the court grants Grayscale's petition to review in Bitcoin's ETF case against the SEC. Now, we got to go into more detail about this because it's really crazy. A three-judge panel for the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals sided with Grayscale's investment in its battle against the Security Exchange Commission. Now, the win by Grayscale on Tuesday comes after the firm sued the SEC in June of 2022. So this has been an ongoing battle for over a year. When the U.S. securities regulators blocked the crypto-focused asset manager from converting its Bitcoin trust to an ETF. Now, the firm had argued that the SEC's approval of ETFs investing in Bitcoin future contracts but not proposed products that hold Bitcoin directly is arbitrary. The judgment granted Grayscale's petition for review and ordered that the commission or the Security Exchange Commission order to be vacated. According to the filing, this means that the SEC has to review the Grayscale application, which has been previously rejected. Now, why is this super important? Now, we have seen many, many different ETF applications being filed for a Bitcoin ETF to be approved within the United States. We've seen this happen with ARK Invest, Fidelity. We've seen them happen with Invesco, but also BlackRock, which I cannot wait to talk more about in this video. But why this is a potential win for the whole crypto community and why it helps you as an investor to know if this is the best time to buy Bitcoin. Well, if you have exposure to Bitcoin, if you bought Bitcoin at like $60,000, which we haven't seen in over a couple years, then you must be wondering like, should I be holding? Should I be selling? Right now, if you're at those points, you should be holding because right now we're seeing that if an ETF is going to be passed within the next few months or maybe up until March of 2024, which I'll talk about in a little bit, then this is actually a bullish case scenario because the SEC continues to lose battles. It lost its battle with Coinbase. It lost its battle with even Grayscale. And what we're seeing is that the SEC is using enforcement by regulation or regulation 
regulation by enforcement, which is not working. Really, it's trying to push the innovation of cryptocurrency, crypto innovation, and the blockchain innovation within the United States. And it's pushing it overseas to other countries such as Singapore, Dubai, even in the UK, which they're already passing ETFs, and even in Canada as well. So right now, you're just seeing that SEC is kind of fighting to get as much money in financing because right now they're using all these different avenues to sue people in order to get money into their actual commission. And over and over, we're seeing that Ethereum as a commodity, Bitcoin as a commodity. And right now, SEC is not doing a good job of winning these battles. And they know this. They're really smart about this. They're going to be suing as many small companies or small businesses or even up and rising startup companies that try to work within the blockchain world. They're trying to sue them to get the money for their own organization as much as possible. And also they're trying to look out for their banks. They're looking out for the banks that establish centralized banks and their partners. There's a reason why the SEC uses the Howey test, which is literally over decades and decades old, that is based on old currencies, not a digital age currency. So right now, you're gonna see that there's gonna be a lot of volatility. Now you must be wondering when a Bitcoin ETF is going to be approved, right? Like, yes, we can see all this news between you know SEC losing or winning, but when's a Bitcoin ETF expected to be approved? Well, it's gonna happen as early as 2024. So based on this, there's usually a maximum of 240 days within a window between an ETF being filed and then it being approved. Because some of those ETFs that were filed by major head funds and asset managers were filed as early as July of 2023. And what are one of those different asset managers? Well, of course, it's going to be BlackRock. Now, if you don't know, BlackRock is like one of the ETF god kings out there in the world. It's the largest asset manager within the world. And right now, based on how many ETFs they've filed, only one has been denied at the 575 of those ETFs that they've filed with the SEC. So it's very interesting. Is a Bitcoin ETF by BlackRock going to be denied and it'll be the number two in history of BlackRock's denial? Or is it going to add on to the most approved ETFs within an asset manager making it 576? Well, I don't know. We'll see. No, I just want to share with everybody that's been happening with BlackRock because secretly they've been buying major shares within four of the five largest Bitcoin miners. What are those companies? Well, those companies are Riot, Marathon, Cypher Mining, Hut8 Mining, and Terra Wolf. Now, you must be wondering how much exposure do they have to each one of these? Well, let's talk about that. They actually own by this data, they have around 6.14% of Riot shares. They have 6.44% of Marathon Digital, 0.88% a Cypher Mining, 2.88% a Terra Wolf. It's the total holdings in these minings amount to around 411 million US dollars. So not only are they filing for a Bitcoin ETF, but they're trying to have as much exposure to these as well. Now, the reason they're doing this is because their clients want exposure to Bitcoin, but they also want to have big investment in technologies within the blockchain world, especially around Bitcoin mining, because simply the rich want to get richer. Makes sense, right? But let's just not talk about BlackRock. What else is pumping? Well, Coinbase is. Coinbase stock has pumped a little bit. It used to be around $73 and over the past 24 hours has jumped up to $84 because this is the Coinbase global exchange within the US. But again, with guarding Coinbase, I don't expect this token to go as much higher. I mean, right now, I'm not wanting to get invested within a Coinbase exchange, especially on the Nasdaq stock. So right now, I'm more focused on the Bitcoin price because Bitcoin is where the most investment should be. Now, let's talk about what we mentioned earlier, which was that the ETFs that the latest that could be approved is March of 2024. Now, why is this important? Because guess what's happening? Bitcoin halving is going to happen very soon in 2024, and I will let you know that date. Now, if you look over the track record over the past multiple halvings that we've had, over the past three halvings, we've seen at around these points of accumulation that we kind of consolidate but move upwards very slowly until there's a major pump to the upside. And you're going to see that here now too, because right now we're seeing something very similar. And as you can see, are we going to see this new trend to the upside where it's going to be super bullish because the Bitcoin halving is very important? And now another thing I want to share with you is this chart another one that's sharing like right now we could experience what we saw in 2020 12 2016 and 2020 because every four years there's a bitcoin happening and right now we could expect the very exact thing so you could see some volatility up and down up and down up and down before we actually see a major pump so right now you're seeing the token of bitcoin being hovering around 28,000. but if we were to drop around 25 even 22,000, what will you do will you actually dollar cost average will you actually buy the dip or are you going to sell and pay for him
hand. Now, I wanted to give you the specific date because again, March of 2024 is when a Bitcoin ETF is expected to be approved or denied. We don't know, but if it is approved, it's very close to the Bitcoin happening, which happens on April 26th. Yes, a month after the last month of the Bitcoin ETF to be approved is literally a month away from the Bitcoin happening. This is happening for a reason, so now you know. Now, with a conclusion and statement around Bitcoin, is this to time to buy? Now, keep in mind, we have to look at Bitcoin's price over the past year. Because again, we've seen this price hover around here for quite some time. Now, back in late of 2023, we saw Bitcoin at around 16,000. You remember those days? It's no longer there. Now, we see that right now, Bitcoin is holding a support level of around 28,000, but right now it could dip back down to 25,000. Now, if Bitcoin's price is gonna hover around 25,000 or use that as a support level, this is the time to dollar cost average. What we could expect is that now Bitcoin could reach a 60,000 all-time high level and even break past that if this were Bitcoin ETF were to be approved. Now, when that does happen, you have to make sure that you have exposure. The most important thing that I think I suggest, but not financial advice, again, this is just entertainment and educational purposes only, you have to have exposure to at least one Bitcoin. Now, again, don't buy in right now because I'm saying so. You have to do your own financial investment strategies because, again, what if I said that around here and it took a dip down to around maybe 12,000? You never know. You really have to evaluate your investment decisions because, again, one Bitcoin is enough to change a person's life. But again, Bitcoin right now, we don't know where the price volatility is because a lot has changed over those past times. Now, if we look over the year, like, yes, we saw the price of Bitcoin hit around 66,000 because of the whole pandemic. And then we had the Fed printing a whole bunch of money into the whole system within the economy of the United States. Well, now the Fed's taking out money from the system. And that's why we saw a massive, massive, literally liquidation. So you have to remember that the Bitcoin happening is not happening anytime soon. We have many more months to go. So right now, only dollar cost average is my personal perspective and just my opinion. But right now at 27,000, Bitcoin right now is an absolute steal compared to 60,000. Now, please evaluate your own investment decisions. Don't go APN. Do not spend your own mortgage on this. Do not go and dump your whole savings account into this you have to have money to pay for food you have to have money to have a normal life and if you don't have exposure to bitcoin maybe there's other altcoins out there that you can have investments in such as ethereum or many other different altcoins but right now my focus is only bitcoin or ethereum because they are commodities based on the cftc and many other politicians support both of these as well many other altcoins are at risk because again we are not sure if they are commodities just at this very moment so let me know your thoughts down below how you feel around Bitcoin, the Bitcoin ETF, BlackRock, and also the SEC case versus the Grayscale case. And I cannot wait to read those comments down below. With that said, be sure to like the button, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to join our Patreon page to receive all of our alpha calls and buy and sell orders, both NFTs and cryptocurrencies, especially around Bitcoin and Ethereum. So then, see you guys and girls next time.